Greetings and welcome to Mishroots Online Education Sessions. I want to start this session off by commemorating this special ancestor, His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Eile Selassie I. Yes, he was born today and worthy of pulling up on this platform and remembering some of his great works, some of his famous quotes, some of his inspiration and wisdom. I mentioned last session that in Ethiopia, they are seven to eight years behind the Gregorian calendar. So in Ethiopia, it is 2012, which is highly significant with regards to predictions of the Mayans and what's going on cosmologically. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to let you guys do your research with regards to that. But this is a special man and worthy of getting to know, worthy of overstanding, understanding his works. And I have produced a small slideshow with some of my favourite quotes with regards to his advice on education and learning. He is of the royal bloodline of King Solomon, documented in biblical scriptures. As I say, a man worthy of knowing. So enjoy the show. If you haven't worked it out already, Miss Roots loves to give, loves to share. And in commemoration to His Imperial Majesty's Iration, His Urch Jong, the day he was born, I have given you a copy to an ebook called The Cabra Nagas. This is essential reading, it's 279 pages long but each word should be savoured. It details information about the Ethiopian kings and what happened to the royal Solomonic bloodline. It talks about the ancient Hebrews and the journey taken from Ethiopia up north on the continent. So it looks like this. The link is in the description box. Select the link, download, and this book is yours. As I say, an essential read for an understanding, understanding about our history as African peoples. How many of you? have downloaded the course content checklist. It looks like this. The link was available in Formal Lesson 1. So if you haven't downloaded the checklist, go to the Formal Lesson 1 session, go in the description box and the hyperlink is there for you to download this specific worksheet. Last week, we completed 1.1, which was the timeline session. There are worksheets attached to that session, which were your assessment activities. If you completed all the worksheets, put the date that you completed them. And also, feel free to comment any positive comments, negative comments about your experiences or about the worksheets. You can comment here within this document or 
share your comments with me, Shrooks. Email me or contact me via my social media platforms. Even better, publicly share them on the YouTube channel so we can discuss them as a learning community. Remember, we learn from each other. Okay? This week, we're going to be concluding Module 1 with a focus on the theory of evolution of early humans. Again, the worksheets are available in the description box within the YouTube channel. Go there, select the hyperlink and download the worksheets directly into the folder that I have advised you to create on your system. Again, put the dates achieved when you've completed those worksheets. And again, create a little comment for yourself with regards to what you learned or summarize what you've learned or feedback on how you feel about the course so far. And as I say, even better, share those comments with me and the fellow learners. So as I said, this week we're going to be concluding module one. And by the end of the session, it is within my intention that you will be able to identify the purpose of using a timeline when studying history. You will also be able to discuss the evolution theory. And lastly, you will also be able to examine why the evolution theory is relevant to Africa. For this session, you may need your book, journal or folder. This is for you to be making notes. And also, as I have recommended consistently each week, a selection of colourful pens. This is a proven science on how we retain information if we use colours and highlights within our notes. Also, you may need your course content checklist. This was downloadable in formal session one. This is a document whereby you can begin to document your learning and your progress. Also, your African history timeline. Again, downloadable in formal session one. And this is just for your reference when we're going through today's session for you to be able to visualize the time period we're going to be focusing on today and access to your electronic folder on your system for this week's sessions worksheets and handouts for you to download directly into this folder as per recommendation this week you will be able to download the Human Evolution Mix and Match Worksheet. I will be highlighting when it's time for you to complete this worksheet within the session. And also the Human Evolution Worksheet. Again, I will highlight when is a good point for you to be taking a look at this document within this session. I repeat, these documents are available for download within the description box of this YouTube channel. Go within the description box, look under the title Learning Resources and the link is there for you to select. Press the hyperlink and it will automatically download onto your system. Most of you, all of you, should have downloaded this document by now. This is the African History Timeline, downloadable in formal session one. This session, we're going to be focusing on this time period here. This is the time period that highlights some of our earliest findings on the continent of Africa. So ultimately, this is African history. Five million years ago, we began to gather up evidence of our human existence. Prior to this period, we don't know much about humans. So that is why there is this plus sign here. And I'm going to be doing sessions regarding what happened during these earlier periods later on in the module. But for now, let's focus on what we know happened 
five million years ago, five to six million years ago, which was the evolution of humans, which happened on the continent of Africa. So it is African history. Can you say how this is partly history, partly geography, partly science, all mixed up in one? There are other subjects as well that we could say it is a part of. Numeracy, if we're talking about numbers. Um, uh, anthropology, which is the study of humans, and so on. So this kind of supports my argument when I say subjects should not be blocked and should be looked at holistically. So anyway... I'm not going to go into too much details about that. I am just triggering those critical thinkers, triggering that critical mindset, because my purpose is to support people's thinking. This session, as I say, is a focus on the theory of evolution. So let's get into that. First activity. Please watch this short animation on evolution. I want you to absorb what you see and be ready for a discussion and to think critically about what has been presented. Thank you. 
based on what you just saw, I want you to comment within the comment section of this YouTube channel. How do you feel about that depiction? Yeah, I'd love to know your feedback and uh, your thoughts with regards to this. I'm going to introduce you to another theory that will help you cri to, to think critically about the, the, the evolution process. The theory is called the triune brain theory. And this theory discusses how our brain has evolved over time. And it connects with what the theory of evolution is saying. This theory is saying that we have developed three main stages within our brain. The first stage is called the reptilian brain, where we developed the ability and the notion of survival and fear. We then evolved and developed a mammal aspect to our brain, which is considered to inhibit the ability to have emotions and seek pleasure and avoid pain. Avoiding pain means that it must have been linked more to our nervous system. And as you know, or should know, will know, that this is linked directly to your spine. And then the last measured version of our brain development is rational thinking, logical, uh, the ability to think beyond survival um and seeking pleasure but to start putting things together in a logical way uh, for us to manifest and develop the earth if you like how do you feel about this theory it definitely links with the theory of evolution let's continue to look at brain development and what we know today fetal brain development we should all know that a fetus is what develops within a woman's womb. This here is a diagram of the fetal development and in particular the brain development of us as human beings within the womb over the months. As you know, nine months were fully developed and ready to come out of the womb. But look at what happens so early on in pregnancy, I take my arrow and circle here. This is a fetus at five months. And more than anything, the brain develops first, as you can see. This here is the brain. So everything is mind. Everything is brain. The brain develops first before any other feature, before any other aspect of our bodies. The brain is the thing that develops first and it grows before anything else can grow. So we know that the brain, the mind, is literally everything and the brain and the mind is what feeds our development. So let's link that to what we know about the triune brain. Yeah? Look at the size of the brain here, which may be linked to the reptilian aspect of our brain, which then potentially would develop further on into the mammal aspect of our brain. And then by nine months, maybe we're able here to, to, to develop that logical thinking aspect of our brain. It's just theory. I'm just throwing it out there. But Definitely, we know that the brain is developed first and all is mind. Doesn't that link nicely to the notion of us being connected to everything? If we look at brain development, if we look at evolution, if we look at the fetal brain development, does it kind of support the notion of us 
having a deep understanding of everything because we come from everything because we are connected to everything because we are everything as i say this is of a spiritual mindset and for critical thinkers on the left hand side you can see that i've put some words for you to think about some words that we say but do we really feel the word holy very religious word but sounds very similar to the word whole and more recently people are talking about being holistic for me those three words mean the same thing and the, it resonates with the the notion of us connecting with all that is because we are all that is because we have come from all that is let me know within the comment section let's have this discussion about what I'm throwing out there as I say my job is to just trigger that critical mindset human evolution please note that evolution is a theory and is not conclusive evidence of how humans came into being although this is the narrative that is told to the mainstream for all those critical thinkers the images in the slides are reconstructions or depictions or interpretations of the species that we're going to be discussing within these sessions fossils the skeletons bones and skulls featured are real abbreviations when you see a in the slides it is an abbreviation for Australopithecus. And when you see H, this is an abbreviation for Homo, which is Latin for human being or man. Approx is the abbreviation for approximately. Let's get into the main body of this session, where we're going to be looking somewhat closely at the early ancestors, which evolved on the continent of Africa, ranging between the years 4 million to 250,000 years before common era. The first of these ancestors, which we have evidence of, is called the Australopithecus and they would have roamed the earth approximately 3.9 million years before common era and would have become extinct by 2.9 million years before common era on the left hand side here is a reconstruction of what this ancestor looked like she looks quite happy don't she really <laughs> i make fun and i make jest as i have to emphasize this is a reconstruction and this is where we get that notion of people saying we come from monkeys this is not a monkey this is an australopithecus yeah and it does throw a, an opportunity there for people to critique this theory because um they say that things have stopped evolving but have they i mean the arguments there and you know it opens up that room for discussion and thinking i am just here to to get you to think i don't have all the answers what i do know though is this image below this is real 
These are the remains that they found in Ethiopia and called Lucy. Now these are the remains of what would have looked like this and has been linked as being a common ancestor. So it's an interesting find and pivotal for our identity. Some information here that I'm just going to go through quite quickly. And uh, this is for you. This is for you to know that the location of this humanoid was found in East Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania. That's where they lived. And they had an ape-like face. So it wasn't an ape, it wasn't a monkey, it was like. Now anybody that is interested in the natural world knows that our closest, re our closest relative is the ape. Uh, they've tested its DNA and apparently it's like in its 90% of being very close to us in its, in, its, um, in its physical, mental structure. Anyway, I digress slightly. Um, it had a flat nose um, and a projecting jaw. A small brain, yeah? Um, and long arms with curved fingers because it climbed. They had canine teeth. And, and a body that stood on two legs. They walked upright. They didn't walk on all fours. And they lived both in the trees and on the ground. So you can see there, again, the link between being ape-like and human, but not ape. Um, and at the bottom there, an, in an interesting fact that uh, the most famous fossil is part of its skeleton, which they've called Lucy. And when they did their tests, it was apparently 3.2 million years old. And it was, it was such an interesting find that the, the Beatles even made a song about Lucy. From there, Apparently, we evolved into the Africanus. Can you see the word there? Africa. Approximately lived between 3.3 million years before Common Era and was gone by 2.1 million years. Slightly different in its reconstruction. The skull that is here is real. This is a real skull found. And its ancestor was found in South Africa. Its main features were it had a slender build. And significantly more like the modern human, apparently. It had a human-like cranium, which is a, the skull. Um, which accommodated a, a larger brain. Now, a larger brain is linked to potentially more intelligence and had more of a humanoid face feature. Interesting fact is that uh, members of this species were mostly vegetarians with a similar diet to the modern day chimpanzee, which consisted of dry fruits and nuts. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? From there, we apparently developed into the Homo hibilis. Yeah, a depiction of this ancestor there. And below we see some tools that were created during the time when they roamed the earth. Apparently between 2.4 million years before Common Era, but were extinct by 1.4 million years before Common Era. And they evolved in East Africa. Homo hibilis meaning the handyman. They had a short body. But long ape-like arms. Like the Australopithecus. Um, they were distinguished from earlier humanoids by their bigger brain and smaller teeth. Interesting facts. 
Traditional forest foods like fruits were becoming more scarce, forcing animals to seek out new nutritional sources. The Homo ibilis ate meat by scavenging from animal carcasses. Now, the Homo ibilis was thought to be the first stone toolmaker, and they would use this tool to smash open animal bones and extract the nutrition from the bone marrow. Isn't that interesting? So they created tools as a method of survival. And that's all the earth was about at that time. Survival of the fittest. Homo ibilis was known for snatching meat from under the noses of fearsome predators like lions. How they know that, I don't know. But in my research, this is what I found. And uh, it's quite interesting, really, isn't it? Because it shows how cunning they must have been to snatch meat from predators such as lions. This is that logical, strategic thinking, isn't it? Which may be linked to the brain getting bigger and the proteins obtained from eating meat. From there, apparently we evolved into the Homo erectus. You know that erect means upright. And we've got a depiction there of the Homo erectus with, with their family. And that skull is a real skull of that ancestor, which lived approximately 1.9 million years before Common Era and extinct 143,000 years before Common Era. So we're getting closer now to modern day times. They were located in India, China and Indonesia, but originated in Africa. So, as I mentioned earlier, erectus means upright and we were now mobile and began that migration. Have a look at your African history timeline and compare the times of our ancestors that we're talking about now with the two periods after the evolution. We've got two main periods of migration there. Compare the time periods. I'll allow you to do that in your own time. The brain and the body size was increased over the hibulus. So it's bigger. The face is short but wide. And the nasal area was projected forward, suggesting the first appearance of a typical human external nose with nostrils facing downwards. Interesting facts. Evidence shows that these species were the first early humans to make earths eat a significant amount of meat and bone marrow and care about their old and their weak. That's interesting, isn't it? All those things would have occurred as the brain developed. It was the longest lived species of our family tree, surviving more than nine times longer than our own species. Let's move on. The Homo agaster. Look at the depiction of this ancestor. The skull. Is a real skull which we have in a museum somewhere and this species would have walked the earth approximately 1.9 million years before common era and was extinct by 1.4 million years before common era the location of this homo 
was in eastern and southern Africa. So we're talking about Tanzania, Ethiopia and Kenya. Agesta is sometimes categorised as a subspecies of the Homo erectus, which means the working man. Agesta has thinner skull bones than the erectus, a smaller face, smaller, smaller teeth, but a larger brain, and stood 1.3 metres tall. So this is like six, six foot three. This is a tall ancestor. Interesting facts. Discoveries of various tools alongside the Augusta's skeletons included hand axes, cleavers, charred animal bones in fossil deposits and traces of camps suggest that these species made creative use of fire. So, during this period, we made fires, we were cooking food, we were cooking animals, yeah, to eat, to survive, obviously. The most complete skeleton of the Homo Agasta was found in Kenya in 1984. The 1 1.6 million year old specimen was named the Turkana boy. Let's discuss the evolution into the Homo neanderthalis. This is a depiction of what's commonly known as a neanderthal. This is the skull. As you know, these are real skulls, which are located in museums around the world. Now, this ancestor lived approximately between the years 200,000 years before Common Era and was extinct by 30,000 years before Common Era. So we're getting very close now to modern day man. Now these ancestors were located in Europe southwestern to Asia only. We never found any Neanderthals on the continent. So for you critical thinkers it's interesting to know that this ancestor trod out of Africa and headed north and we only found this evolved version of our being in Europe and southwestern to Asia. Characteristics and features were they had a large middle part of their face, angled cheekbones and a huge nose which was for humidifying and warming cold dry air. Let's think about that. If they needed this type of nose for humidifying and warming cold, this means that they were living in the part of the earth that was extremely cold. Now, if you look at your African history timeline, you'll see that this will coincide with the Ice Age and this ancestor, I believe, would have survived the Ice Age and hence why their body adapted to cope with these conditions which is what the last sentence says their bodies were shaped for conserving heat hence the long hair more hair and uh, the way that their facial features etc evolved to maintain their survival Neanderthals were the first humans to wear clothing and this was highly necessary as they lived in the glacier environments. So this is facts and backs up my thoughts with regards to 
them having to survive during the Ice Age in the Northern Hemisphere of Europe and Southwestern Asia. This humanoid was known to have resided in caves. So make the connection between the Neanderthal, the caveman and the hurly inhabitants of Europe and the Northern Hemisphere. Homo sapiens sapiens. This is a depiction of the Homo sapiens sapien, which means the wise man. And they came into existence approximately 200,000 years before Common Era and apparently is the present day man, me and you are homo sapiens sapien. We are the wisest, apparently, of all of our ancestry. Let's have a look at this. We evolved in Africa, but we are now worldwide. Homo sapien means wise man and stands up as to having a larger brain than any other species. It has the ability to speak language and has now adapted to have a concept of religion or a god or spiritual matters. The Homo sapien shows compassion for other people and has the ability to reason things out. Now, Try and cast your mind back to the earlier discussion of this session with regards to brain development, logical thinking and a connection to all things. Interesting facts. Fossils and genetics show that our species, the Homo sapien, evolved in Africa around 200,000 years before Common Era and began to spread out from there by at least 100,000 years before Common Era. We now live in all parts of the world and are the sole surviving species left in our once diverse family tree. Let's go back to this diagram. You've seen it before in previous sessions and I just think it's a fantastic diagram depicting the migrations of humans out of Africa to the rest of the world. You should be able to make the link now between our early ancestors and their roots that they took globally and you should also now be able to connect this diagram to your African history timeline. So this is just a reminder and a refresher that you have been introduced to this diagram and hopefully it supports you making connections and developing your knowledge. Ancestors of modern human beings developed in Africa. The earliest true hominid, or precursor to human, is probably Australopithecus, who lived in open woodlands rather than forests, like the apes. The earliest known species is Australopithecus afarensis of Africa, who lived about four to three million years ago. A descendant, Australopithecus africanus, appeared about three and a half to two and a half million years ago, and may be ancestral to both humans and later Australopithecus. The earliest human species, Homo habilis, emerged about two to one and a half million years ago. Australopithecus robustus and Bocii, descendants of Afarensis, lived during the same era as Homo habilis, but probably became extinct. A significant ancestor was Homo erectus, about 1.6 million years ago, who had a larger brain, a smaller jaw and teeth, had developed a hand axe, and knew how to make fire. Homo erectus was probably the first to move out of Africa. 
evolved and adaptable enough to survive very different environments. During the period of about one million to half a million years ago, Homo erectus moved north to the warmer parts of what is now Europe and east to Asia. Homo erectus migrated as far as China and Indonesia, where evidence of its presence has been found by modern paleontologists. As early man evolved, he also moved. From about 500,000 to 30,000 years ago, there were migrations across Asia and a land bridge that led to North America. During this time, Homo sapiens appeared, about 250,000 years ago, evolved to a brain size close to modern man and capable of adapting to challenging conditions, yet still retaining a large face and big teeth like Homo erectus. Further migrations from about 30,000 to 10,000 years ago brought man to Australia and from Asia to the other side of the world through an emerging land bridge to North America and down to South America. Modern human beings, Homo sapiens sapiens, probably appeared around 40,000 years ago with a bone structure almost identical to people today. Let's summarize facts obtained from today's session. All Australopithecus first evolved in Africa alone. All original Homo species evolved in Africa alone, including the Homo habilis, the Homo erectus, etc. Every stage of evolution of the humanoid species over 5 million years plus happened in Africa only. Key human developments occurred in Africa such as tool making, fire making and speech. Although migrations out of Africa were being made continuously and dispersing populations across the globe, each species, according to the theory, was totally replaced by a newly emerged type that had evolved in Africa only. This migration also includes us and sets the stage for a new type of human to evolve out of Africa. No species that left Africa other than those that left only 70,000 years ago survived. All species, both Australopithecus and humanoid, seem to have evolved only in one specific location, East Africa, and more specifically, Ethiopia. We are now coming towards the end of this session. But before we conclude, it is now time to check your learning. This is a great point now for you, if you haven't already, to go into the description box and download the two worksheets designed by Miss Roots for today's session. Download the mix and match worksheets and the human evolution worksheets and complete. To complement that, here are some questions that you can do either written or by a discussion. It's up to you. Are you able to discuss what is meant by the human evolution theory? Can you compare and contrast the links between the human evolution theory, the triune brain theory and the fetal brain development? Can you discuss what is meant by holistic? Are you able to describe what happened to humans as they migrated out of Africa? Can you name three early ancestors? Can you describe three early ancestors? We are now at the end of this session and I want to say well done to everybody that has managed to complete the session do all the worksheets and answer all the questions within the check your learning section. 
I am very proud of you. Thank you for taking part in this session and I look forward to reading your comments and your feedback. Please share, please subscribe and please like if you enjoyed this session.